We can also reduce um, our carbonyls using a Grignard reaction or a Grignard reagent. Um, this is a very powerful reaction. And it's really powerful because we have a carbon-carbon bond formation. Right, so we haven't learned that many different ways to form form carbon carbon bonds. So whenever you do, that's obviously a really important reaction because it allows you to construct much larger molecules. Um, so let's take a look at how this works. So what we have at, to begin with is an alkyl halide. So your X is usually a chloro or, or a bromo. And when we think about the properties of this molecule, this compound is going to be electrophilic. Right, we have this um, dipole arrow. Uh, pointing towards the more electronegative halogen rather than the carbon, right? And so this is an electrophile. And so you would expect it to be attacked by things rather than um, be attacking things. However, what we can do is we can add magnesium um, to this compound. And when you add a, a magnesium, what it does is it inserts itself um, in between the carbon and halogen bond and flips the polarity of this bond. So um, now what we have is actually the carbon is partially negative instead of being partially positive. And what this does is it makes it a really good nucleophile. Also a pretty strong base as well. So basically what this is acting as is kind of like a C minus, uh, if you want to think about it that way. Um, depending on whose mechanism you look, some people just draw it as a C minus. And so similar to the reducing agents to the sodium and the lithium aluminum um, hydrides, we can use this to reduce carbonyls. But in this case, instead of adding um, hydrogens, we can add all kinds of alkyl chains. So what you do is you add some of your Grignard reagent, which is just going to be some kind of RMGX, where R is just some kind of alkyl chain. And then the second step, you just add some water to get rid of any excess um, Grignard reagent. Um, and reprotonate your alcohol if needed. And so what this does is it transforms the carbonyl into an alcohol and adds whatever R group um, was attached, right? So this is a really powerful reaction because you can make all kinds of large molecules. Uh, the mechanism for this is relatively simple and pretty much the same as our hydrides. So we have our Grignard reagent, which is nucleophilic. We've got our carbonyl, which is electrophilic. And then our nucleophile is simply going to attack our electrophile. We're going to break that carbon-oxygen bond. That way, we don't mess with the octet rule. Right, And what you can see is now we've added our alkyl chain. Make sure that you're adding the correct number of carbons. In this case, we have an ethyl um, Grignard reagent. So we add an ethyl group here. And then in the second step, we simply just reprotonate our alcohol. Again, you can represent this um, ethyl Grignard as an ethyl with a negative charge, if you'd like. Um, but there are some things we have to be careful about Grignard reagents, as we'll see in the lab. Um, so we'll actually do this reaction lab, which is very cool. Um, one of the problems is that they're very water sensitive. Right, we said it's kind of like a C minus, which is a very basic um, atom. And so if you have any acidic protons, such as that from water, you're going to mess up your reaction. And so not only is any excess water going to mess this up, but any alcohols on your compound will actually interfere with this reaction as well. So for example, here we've got an alcohol and a bromide. Um, and then if we try to add some magnesium, we will briefly form our Grignard reagent. However, immediately this acid-base reaction is going to occur. And then you're just going to deprotonate your alcohol. Um, and so, right, that's not what you necessarily wanted to do. Maybe you wanted this Grignard to attack some kind of carbonyl to make a larger molecule. Um, but we can get around this easily. using what's known as protecting groups. And in this case, the protecting group we're going to use is uh, trimethylsilane. So it's just a silicon with three methyl groups and then um, a chlorine attached to it as well to have a good leaving group. 
So for example, we have this alcohol. What we add is this um, CLTMS. And again, the TMS stands for um, trimethyl xylane. And then we just add some kind of weak base. Um, generally, um, triethylamine is used. And what this does is it replaces the OH with an OTMS, with this basically just doing essentially an SN2 type of reaction. Now that we have that OTMS there, we can then go ahead and add our magnesium to form our Grignard reagent, and then it won't do a reaction within itself. And then after that, you can add your carbonyl of interest and thus form your larger molecule. And then you can simply remove the TMS by the addition of some acid. to get your alcohol group back. So overall, pretty cool. Um, you can do the Grignard reaction on esters as well. So for example, if you added some excess of maybe your methyl Grignard reagent, and then after that, do a, a water workup. you can form a tertiary alcohol. Um, this is approximately the same mechanism as the lithium aluminum hydride, so we're not gonna go over it, but you can check out the um, work along for, for the kind of answer. Um, you have to be careful of carboxylic acids. The Grignard reagent is not gonna be compatible with them, and it's not gonna be compatible with them because we've got a very acidic proton, right? And we just said that uh, these Grignards are very sensitive to acidic protons. So if you try to use this, um, to do a Grignard reagent, all you're going to do is just deprotonate your carboxylic acid. Um, and even though um, you have a deprotonate carboxylic acid, even if you add more Grignard reagent, you still won't be able to get the Grignard reaction to go. So overall, very powerful reaction. Um, we'll take a look at it in deeper depth later on, uh, but this is definitely a good intro.